So can I ask you about the the evolution of goalkeepers? Because you know there was there was a time when it was just stand between the sticks and just blast the ball out as far as you can. That's very different these days. And obviously you did your part in terms of like you know the Na- Anthony Nash penalty. So you helped change that rule that time that you you, you rushed it in twenty fourteen. I think it was and got a lovely bruise for it. But then, of course, you started scoring points from outfield too. And I, I've seen you do this in club challenge matches when we played you as well another time. And obviously, you did it against Tipperary. I'm pretty sure you did it against Tipperary in 2018 also. What do you think sort of sparked that evolution in the goalkeeper in terms of not just being a lad who's just standing on his own end line between the sticks? Yeah, I, I think, I think to be honest, the main thing that sparked it is actually an evolution from probably from the, a full forward line point of view. Um, corner forwards are almost extinct at the moment in you know in, in in the modern game. Really, it's very rare that you see a full forward line now. You know, one full forward and the two two corner forwards out hugging the corner flag, um, which would have been the case all along. You know, I think these days it's much more common to see one or two inside, but they're hugging the you know they're hugging the penalty box really, which leaves leaves both corners wide open. So, I suppose it just it naturally comes from an evolution of that. Now there's a load of space over there to be to be exploited. So I suppose naturally you think why not go into that space and offer yourself as a you know as an extra outlet. Um you know I certainly wouldn't have been doing it you know 10, 10 or eleven years ago when you know when corner forwards were there I wouldn't be going next or near it, you know, but now there's a lot of space after opening up for for a goalkeeper to you know to go out and exploit I suppose. So I think I think that's actually where it's after coming from. And is it something where you progressively got a little bit braver in terms of starting off going out maybe to the 21, then the 45, and you're like, space continues to open up here. How did it happen for you? Yeah, it was basically the same. Yeah, I think it started out from probably, you know, maybe cheekily going out looking for a sideline back from, you know, from a wing back or something and then realising, um, you know, when, when one of your backs was under pressure, you know, rather than him hitting it blindly over the shoulder, Jesus, it would make much more sense if I just ran out 15 yards here into the corner and offered myself as, you know, as an easy out ball. And, you know, you, you, can, you can belt it the length of the pitch if you want then, you know, as opposed to, a, you know, a back clearing it under pressure over the shoulder, it could go anywhere. So it just, it, it all just seemed to be a very natural progression um, and everything you were doing was, was, was making sense. And, you know, there's going to be there is going to be a day where it's going to go wrong. I don't think I've been massively caught with it yet, thank God. But you know, there is going to be a day where it will go wrong, and and, and I think that'll be the day then where you'll say, sure, it was always going to happen. But I mean, the net benefit that's already after coming out of it, I think, you know, it's already paid dividends in you know, a hundredfold already. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, I I do think it's all an evolution of of the corner forwards are coming in more centrally and, you know, space just opening up and, and, and I suppose with how much more tactically teams are looking at things, you're always looking for an extra edge and how you can exploit, you know, space anywhere in the pitch or how you can offer out help in hand. And I think even just naturally wanting to be involved in the game, I think as a goalkeeper, we all fancy ourselves as outfield players a little bit. So, you know, we, all, we always want to get, you know, get involved and everyone wants to be on the ball as much as you can. So I suppose it's a culmination of all those things really. And I suppose other things I would have noticed then, I, I remember a couple of years ago in an All-Ireland quarterfinal seeing Owen Murphy standing maybe 35 yards out from goal because he wanted to maybe make a bit of a zonal, do a bit of a zonal puck out sort of a situation for Kilkenny there to stop players running into space. So I see that. I see, um, I, I also see a situation now where like when I've been playing full back in the last couple of years, I've asked the goalkeeper to come out beside me so I can stand one side of the forward and he'll stand the other. And even if it's only visually to distract him, but just so you less feel like you're completely exposed back there. And then one other thing, Rory Began against Niall Morgan. I'm not sure mm-hmm. if you've watched those Tyrone Monaghan games when the two lads are out midfield contesting puck outs or kick outs in those situations. So I'm asking you, what else are you noticing and where is this going? Yeah, I, I know. I, I see it in the football a lot. Um, you know, they did, geez, they'd be out nearly on the 65 looking at, you know, cutting out a puck, uh, cutting out a kick out. But I think the major difference between hurling and football there is that, you know, if, if the hurling keeper was out 30, 40 yards and if Owen Murphy is doing a fair play to him, I don't have the legs to get back quick enough on, on the goal, to be honest. You know, like like a ball can travel 80, 90, 100 yards in space two seconds, you know, so in hurling, you know, as opposed to football where it has to be gradually worked up the pitch. So it's, I think it's a dangerous, dangerous game if you're going to be that far off the goal. You know, just just to cut out of space, like I don't know. Um, you know, in fairness to Murphy, I know he plays outfield for the club, so he'd probably be more comfortable if the ball did end up. You know, if the keeper, I suppose, at the other end called his bluff and did hit it down that side, so maybe he'd have, have the confidence or the whereabouts to go after and attack the ball. But 
I think in general, when you see that kind of stuff, it, it, you know, it's kind of a bit of a bluff, you know, just to kind of catch the keeper's eye and make OP goes the other side. Because if you're caught under under three men under a puck out and the goal is free, 50 yards behind you, um, you know, that's not a position I want to be in. So, you know, I might be a little bit adventurous, but not 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 that much anyway. Yeah, could you see yourself doing like maybe a one-two with a defender around somebody, you know, as in just to get past the player and like where else can it go? Because you know there there are those situations Sorry, where yeah, this could go wrong. Like, so you just broke up there for a second. Would you say that oh, again? Uh, apologies. I'm just wondering, like, would it, do you think it'll get to a situation now where you as a keeper will come out and do sort of a one-two hand pass with a full back around the player and actually get involved in the play a little bit? I know you're saying there's limits to how brave you'll be, but it probably will continue to evolve a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think, I think there's definitely scope for, uh, for scope for giving a pass and even going for a return. You know, um, like, like I said, you are, you know, if it's if, if your team is six on six at the backs, uh, you're essentially, a, you know, you know, a seventh man. You know, you're not going to really be marked. So if you want to give a pass, you, you absolutely could go again. I've tried it a few, a few times in challenge games, and so it's, it's been fine. Um. You know, and I, I would do it again in you know in a, in a championship game if 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 the situation um, came up naturally. It's not. It's definitely not something I go forcing. Um, but if you know if you're on the run coming out with a ball and you see someone free, you know, I, I I think that is probably the next step in terms of giving a giving a pass. And you know, that man who gets the pass will then draw in a, an opposition player, which means you're then free to go look for a return. I could definitely see that happening over the next year or two. Um, like if you even look at. If you even look at, I think it was uh, Cork's puck out tactic, tactics this year. You know, they, they could be playing it around their full back line three or four times before they, they go find someone up the pitch, you know. So I think keepers in general are becoming a lot more trusted um, as, as as players on the ball overall, uh, as you know, from an overall point of view. Um, you know, and I think I think that's that's probably where it's going, where you, where you could see a keeper give a one-two and end up end up around the middle. But, you know, there, there would have to have been a discussion in place that someone's going to cover the goal in that situation. You know, I don't think it's something you could just choose to do off your own back and so nobody knows you're going to do it because, um, you know, you could be left fairly embarrassed pretty quickly, I think.